What's up guys, Tuki here, back again. This is my Boston Bruins franchise mode series here on NHL 17, and let's get right down to business. Let's keep moving forward with this offseason, and yeah, let's see what happens. Still a lot of questions after the last episode. We of course have some players that need to be re-signed, and we are going to try and make the most of this, and of course put together the best team that we possibly can. If you hear a mouse clicking in the background, that's because there is one, as we are going to try to get the best deal on to recruit that we can so that nobody else can say that I'm terrible at organizing deals because I wasn't going through the effort of the 15%. But anyway, Tory Krug should be a good top four defenseman for a while. So let's see here. Let's see. He's 29. Four years? Actually, three years is the sweet spot right there. So that is not too bad at all. Let's just times up. Ba, ba, da. We can cut about a million dollars off of that, really. Just about a million dollars. So, 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 so. All right, let's go to 5.35. We'll give it a little bit of leeway, and he should except that uh, Matt Grizzlick needs a new deal for the first time in a while. Three years seems to be the sweet spot for him. Wish I had my phone over here. I do not. So we will have to use the built-in calculator on the old PC. We can save just about or just over a quarter of a million dollars here. So we can go down. Oh, we can go down to 425, so we will go to 4.35, give him a little bit of a deal. Not too bad. Charlie McAvoy also needs a deal, and we can't get him on a two-way deal. But what we can do is be cheap as shit and try to sign him for eight years, because odds are this is much like the Jacob Larson contract on the Fantasy Draft series, where this should work out just fine and actually one million straight up should work out uh, Zaporo also needs a contract this is what I was talking about in terms of what we have to do and you know the amount of potentials that factor in the growth of these players how that all factors in it is a tough decision and we can save uh, let's go to 1.3 for Zaboral. Uh, Kyle Quincy, of course, will be released. Anybody else? Yes, Jeremy Lozon needs a deal. I don't exactly think he's going to turn into an amazing player or even an NHL player, although, you know, shit happens. Allison, do we want to sign Jamin Allison? I suppose I will, because at the very least, he can be a depth guy for us. But Ram, Jag, Singh, Talbot, and Picard. We won't sign them for now. Zachary Sinitian needs a deal. And the more money we give, or the more term we give him, the more money he wants. So let's go to two years for now. A little bit of a bridge deal. And we can cut off about 600 k So we'll just go to 4 mil. Two years of four mil for an 85 isn't bad. And he is listed as a second line right wing. So that will be interesting. Hunter Smith, he earned a contract in my eyes. We're going to try to get him for one year. And we might trade him. I'm not sure if I want to keep going with that fourth line experiment. Although, he didn't play too terribly. Uh, Dennis Gurionov, this is going to be an interesting case to see if he can bounce back. Obviously suffering... From a little bit of a morale issue, but that is okay. We can cut off about 500k from this, so we'll go to 3.4. That is fine. Jesse Gabrielle needs a new deal. Not willing to accept a two-way deal. So we will go 1 million, or 1 year 1 million for Jesse Gabrielle. Dingle, 66 overall. And centers, are we good? Yes, we are. So let's see. Who is brought back here, and then what our money total will be. Obviously, we are signing some pretty decent players with some decent money being thrown around. Let's look. Tory Krug is here, and apparently we're a top-ranked team. 
Matt Grizzly, Hunter Smith, Gurionov, Jamin Allison. Everybody have fun tonight, everybody. Wang Chung, because everybody has resigned. Not too bad. And that takes away half of our money. 15 million. 15 million to work with. Let's get a look at the free agent pool and who will be available. Like, if we could have a top center, a top defenseman show up right about now. Not necessarily even a top defenseman, although that would make things easier in terms of who we end up having to move out. So much. The, the, the shape and the look of this team, all of it depends on progression. But let's take a look here. Who is available? Uh, Roman, Yossi, Kreider, Tyler Johnson could be an answer. Uh, Jack Roslovic is available. Brock Besser is available. We could have another shot at him, and he's a UFA. All right, not too, not too bad, actually. Not too bad. The goalie situation, not like we have a goalie problem right now. Uh, we are actually good. Are there any prospects? Any prospects? High backup. There are no goalies. That we are really going to want here. All low fringe. All of them a little bit older. High AHL. Nope. All right. So goalies, not a factor for us. Defense. Who do we have? Uh, Roland McCown. Eh. Julian Bergman. Or is it Julius? I think it's Julius, right? Julius Bergman. Brady Shea. Not ideal. Uh, Nikita Triamkin, not looking like he's going to turn into the amazing defenseman he was for us in the Vancouver series. Uh, Nudivara, Rob O'Gara, that kind of rhymed. I mean, well, there is somebody right here. Bren, uh, Brendan Owens, who was a 2018 second-round pick of the Leafs. And you also have Tony Langdon, who was a second-round pick of the Sabres. I don't think low top four is going to be good to go after, especially at 24 years old. They're just not going to turn into anything, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, Rob O'Gara, not really worth it. So Owens and Langdon are options. 7th D, Oleg Anisimov. 7th D, though, do we, or 7th potential. Do we really want to waste too much time with that? I don't think we do. I'd rather have high AHL. Is there anybody decent there? 24, 21, Glenn Smithson. But as it is, like, I don't know if we're going to sign anybody here either. I really don't. Because just, I mean, at best, they're medium sixths, and we already have players of that caliber. But someone who we don't have of a certain caliber would be Roman Yossi. If we could have him, and it's a shame he's not listed as the top two, but he and Krug on the left-hand side... I mean, we signed him. That means we could trade away Tory Krug because Chalowski's going to be on the roster. So that's interesting. There is a strong chance we'll go after Roman Yossi here. A very strong chance. Right wings. There's a very strong chance we're going after Brock Besser. Uh, Andre Burakovsky, he's an RFA. I think we're going to go after Brock Besser from the looks of it. I don't like low top nine potential. So Corso is out of the question. There are certain, certain potentials that you just learn to not really care to go after. I mean, yeah, someone with medium bottom six could turn into something, but the odds are pretty low. High AHL, nobody there. So it's looking like Yossi and Besser so far for who we're going after. Uh, left wings, who do we have? Chris Kreider. I think I'd rather hedge my bets on Gurionov, to be honest. So, right now, it's just a matter of prospects. Low top six. I said I didn't like low top six, but Valerie Breeland, or Valeri Breeland, is available. You have Valeri Kaigorodov as well, who's also a UFA. So, some interesting names there. Low top nine, you have Howard Sackick. That's not looking great, though. All right, AHLs. Now, normally, I do most of this off... Uh, off screen, but that's okay. So we we have some names. Breland's an option. Then you have Barbashev. Roslovic is available. 85 overall too. He could easily he could easily step in and be a second or third line guy. Pending. Roslovic is a big time option for us here. As is potentially Tyler Johnson. And it's just a matter of whether or not we want to hedge our bets on Roslovic. 
Although it could be Sagan, Johnson, Roslevic with uh, with uh, Cole Castles on the fourth line. Okay, we have fifteen million bucks to spend. Fifteen mil. We can make this work. I think we can make this work. Let me just really quickly look again. Barbashev's a no. Roslevic not exactly a true prospect. Uh, Twenty-one-year-old Cole Minen. Ricard Cole Minen. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> it's just a matter of making the right choices, and especially in terms of the contract spots that we have. Although I could just trade away some people. But goalies, there wasn't anybody. Defense, it is Roman Yossi, who wants about six million a year. Nearly seven. So it's uh, Yossi Besser. Yossi Besser. Breland, potentially. Ross, a bit, okay. Ah, so there are four big names here. Four big names. Let's go. God, do I want to go for Yossi? We're going for Roslovic. First off, of course, normally a Jets prospect. And it's looking like a four-year deal would work out pretty well for us. I unfortunately closed the old calculator app, but that is okay. Math is not my strongest suit. Let me tell you, we could save 600k on this deal. So let's go to 3.8. Give it a little bit of leeway. Four years at 3.8 for Roslovic. Uh, left wings. I'm not going to worry about Breland being low top six. I am going to worry though about Brock Besser. And we will see what we can get him for. Three years looks to be the magic number. So I uh, typed in one too many zeros there, unfortunately. And again, 600K looks to be the magic number. So let's go. We'll go 3.9 for him. Again, just to give him a little bit to chew on. Roman Yossi. Roman Yossi. My thinking is here, it'll be easier to trade for a center than it would be for a better defenseman. So if we can't get Tyler Johnson, I'd rather have I'd rather have Roman Yossi than Tyler Johnson because we could trade away Krug and probably get a center. Roman Yossi. Now the thing is he's 30 already. He is 30 already. But if I give him a deal until he's 35, that's perfect money uh, money wise I'm getting a little bit sick so I apo I apologize if there's the occasional uh, bit of uh, sounding quite nasally but let's see we can get him down to about 5.8 million holy shit I'm gonna try for 5.9 and we will hope that goes through and because that was as cheap as it was I'm gonna ah uh, I'm gonna wait I'm going to wait on the Tyler Johnson deal. I'm going to wait on the Tyler Johnson deal. Let's see if we can get an answer from these three guys and get three of the best free agent signings we would have ever had uh, in a mode. Let's see. Are we going to get an answer anytime soon? Yossi has rejected. Roslovic has rejected and signed with Vancouver and Brock Besser. Once again, declines. The 15% trick fails us. Case in point that it doesn't always work. And that's why often it's uh, why I don't go with it. But then again, then again, then again. Am I wrong here? Is that, Am I just tired? Is that only for resigning players? Did I just screw myself out of three good players? That might be the case. That might be the case. Although, the last time I heard a complaint, it was during free agents, uh, not free agent signings. It was, uh, actually, yeah, it was during a free agency period, the last time I heard that complaint. I don't know, am I wrong? Is it for the re-sign phase only? Anyway, though, we're not getting Roslevic. Brock Besser, once again, refuses to come to our team. So we are still going to go after Yossi. Now we're going to go after Tyler Johnson. Uh, we won't go after Kreider. And we're going to splash a little bit of cash here. 
Uh, we're also going to try to get Breland. So we will offer him a max two-way deal. Unfortunate that we just missed out on the players that we missed out on. But in order to make sure that doesn't happen again, we are going to give Roman Yossi exactly what he wants, if not more. 6.9 million for five years. Hopefully he accepts. And then Tyler Johnson, three years at 7.6. Please accept. Don't have the Johnson-Besser combination go to Carolina. That would be brutal for us. Now we see if these two accept. I am pretty disappointed in missing out on Besser and Roslevic. And Carolina. Ugh, Carolina gets Besser and Johnson. Breland's here. No answer from Yossi. This is turning out to be a nightmare. Roman Yossi has at least accepted. So we get Yossi. But we miss out on Johnson, Roslevic. And Brock Besser, a pretty, pretty decent, uh, pretty disappointing, I should say. Offseason for us, there's no one else here that I really want to sign. So we will move forward. We will hope for the best in terms of progression. And then we'll see how this team pans out. All right, guys, our first trade, and there will be a lot of them. So let's get down to this. Alex Lyon is on his way out, unfortunately. A hero in the past, not quite as big of a hero in the past season. The regular season, he was all right. The postseason, or the regular season was pretty disappointing. The postseason, he was pretty good. But in the end, I think we're going to have to let him go to make room for some younger talent. Alex Lyon on his way to L.A. Trade number two, and as I kind of suspected... Tory Krug is no longer required. We're going to try to package Dowell as well into this to get Gabe Velarde. Now, I know we've had Velarde before, but this time, medium elite potential, 99 offensive awareness. That is just so sexy of a number that I'm willing to take the risk on him being our number two center this year. I mean, you look at the other stats, great skating, Shooting and puck skills, not tremendous, but 99 offensive awareness. How could he not put up points? Now, I don't know if this will go through, and it didn't. But again, we are in a decent spot to be able to give up some prospects. And there were other prospects that we're going to be looking to trade. Matter of fact, here is another one of them. Sylvain Belafeu, I believe. 83 overall, low top six. So I don't know how much better he'll get. He's expendable. He is, believe it or not, he's expendable and still unsigned. So will that go through for Velarde? It will not. And again, this is the problem with trying to get some of these elite players. Another person on the way out, unfortunately, Libor Hayek, who we signed not too long ago. Solid player. We don't exactly need him. Will that go through for Velarde? It will not. Case in point, it is so difficult to get some of these top players uh, do we have another defensive prospect? We do. We can give up Hedberg. Now, again, I know that's some incredible defensive depth on its way out. But trust me, we're still in a very good spot. Will that go through for Velarde? We're rebuilding Detroit in one season. Even that won't go through. Oh, my God. Guys, we've hit the lottery. No, we're not going to be able to get Velarde. But the Winnipeg Jets are having trouble with a certain player. Nolan Patrick. Again, I know we've used him before. We're not finding a better deal than this. They want to trade him. He's not happy. We have to make this work. We have to. The problem becomes whether or not we can actually afford him because of Tory Krug's salary. Now... Oh, God, this is going to be difficult. This is going to be difficult, and we might. This might be. This might be where someone like Picard really comes in handy. And it would be fair. There are other players we could potentially give up. By the way, the, the secret's out. Dennis Chalowski jumped to an 89 overall. I know. It's ridiculous. The question is, do I want to give up someone like Picard? To try and get Nolan Patrick. Not really. <laughs> the ideal situation 
The ideal situation would probably be Zaboral, although I don't want to really give him up either. <laughs> If I give up Zaboral, that would make room for us to keep Belafeu or whatever, or Libor Hayek. God damn it, without being able to take Tory Krug out of the situation, that puts us into a pretty rough spot. How much is Zaboral making? 1.3 for two years? I think it has to be Zaboral. It has to be. I don't want it to be, but it has to be. Which means Tory Krug, uh, he's going to stay, but then play out of the normal spot you'd want him in. But I have I have no choice. It has to be Zaboral. So we will look to keep Tory Krug. Let's see who else we can add to this. We can add Hedberg. Will that go through? It won't, but we are going to make this work. Nolan Patrick is going to be... On this team, how about we tack on Hayek? Will that go through? And it will. Zaboral, Hedberg, and Libor Hayek to the Washington Cap to the Washington Capitals, to the Winnipeg Jets. I'm excited as hell. For Nolan Patrick, who is an 88 and will slot in behind Tyler Sagan this season. What a goddamn coup. Our next attempted trade. We are actually going to get rid of Tory Kruger, at least try, along with Lozon and Dowell. We're going to try to get Riley Tufty from Dallas, as well as Schmalewski. Schmalewski, who the hell knows? And some picks. I doubt that goes through exactly. Yeah, I had a feeling. But we are going to try. Actually, that first round pick probably won't even go through. This team is undergoing, as I told you, drastic changes. Drastic, drastic changes. That won't go through either. Jesus, man, when they don't want to give up players, they really don't, and that's why the Nolan Patrick deal worked out so well. That still won't go through. Will this go through? You sons of bitches. You will take Tory Krug, we will get your prospects, and you will like it. Accept this deal, you motherfucker. Accept it! Accept your reality. This is happening. Have a third round pick. I said good day. Thank you. Get the fuck out of here. Tory Krug rejoins Brad Marchand in Dallas. It's a sad day with this next trade. I don't think the Gabrielle and Hunter Smith experiment's going to work out, so we're going to get rid of them. Solarik. He's a beast in the AHL, but he simply hasn't improved that much. Still a 79 overall, so unfortunately we're going to try to get rid of him. I doubt this trade goes through. Indeed, we asked for too much from the Ducks. That still won't go through, really. You cheapskates. Absolute cheapskates. We will take as many picks as we can get, though. That still won't go through. I don't care if we're offering you too many players for the roll. Fuck you. Wow, even if we try to fleece them, that won't go through. Holy shit. All right. God damn. Fuck you, then. <laughs> we'll, we'll send them to Washington. And then we're going to Vancouver. Anybody get that reference? That goes through. Did we get too much? Did we get too little? I have no idea. But quickly here, while we can, let me take a look and see if there is anybody else I want to get rid of. Fowler is never going to make this team. Uh, Solaric can be added to that list. Right wings, Twomanen. Not going to make the team. Emerton, who we just drafted, not going to make the team. I normally abstain from doing this, but we will just get rid of people who aren't going to fit in, including Rammer. Rammer can fuck right off. I'm just kidding, Mr. Ram Jag Singh. I love you. Not really. Um, uh, how about Arizona? How about Arizona? I won't even be nice and send Rammer to Vancouver. He can go to the desert for all I care. A second and a third, that's probably too little, actually. Let's just rob them of all their picks. Who cares? Who the hell cares? Arizona for a handful of prospects. That actually didn't go through. Arizona. Arizona. Phoenix. Phoenix. Thank you. <laughs> that went through. I'm happy. I'm fine. We just get rid of them. I don't care. 
And our last trade guy is not quite a blockbuster. We're going to get rid of Rodgers, who I feel like could still become a decent defenseman. We just have to prioritize other people down in Providence. And Jakob Forsbacher Carlson, who just isn't going to pan out. I don't know if that will go through with Calgary. It will not, but we're still going to aim to get a second round pick. And then we get to take a look at the finalized roster. I cannot wait to see your opinion. Calgary playing hardball. Right now with these picks, it's kind of annoying, very annoying, extremely annoying. Wow, uh, that fu uh, yay! I hate I hate your menus. I do, I hate them. Oh, don't I hate them? But uh, yeah, right now we are uh, we are a team with a ton of riches. I'm getting that second round pick. Will that go through? No. You know what? I don't care. I'm getting that second round pick. They can complain all they want. They are giving, not the 2026-7. Gee, why? Why would it be sorted that way? Here, have our fourth. We're not going to need it. Give us your second. Give us your second round pick, you twats. Thank you. And finally, I can say that this team is finished 97 offense, 93 defense, 90 goaltending. Down in Providence, still a very strong chance of a three-peat. 81, 81, and 85 for the rankings. Let's take a look at this team. Of course, the top line will still be Stuart Skinner, Tyler Sagan, and David Pasternak until they start to fail, in which case we'll change things up. Second line, Stromwall finally changed to a second line forward. He will be the left wing. We will end up switching his position. He will be with Nolan Patrick. Unreal that we have him. And Zachary Sinitian, now a second line forward at 23 years old, 87 overall. I was really hoping he'd have a pretty strong wrist shot. Now, you could argue maybe putting Skinner down here. And then doing something like this, Pasternak, Sagan, Stromwall. We could do that. We could do really any combination. The third and fourth line is where it gets interesting. Denis Gurionov has dropped to a third line scoring forward. We will hope that he can rebound. Obviously, uh, trading away certain players hasn't helped. But he, of course, is on a good contract moving forward. Dmitry Teratukin will be the center to start. He's not the best center in terms of face-offs. But we're gonna give him a chance. I mean, he does look to be better than what his, uh, you know, than what his role indicates at an 83 overall. And then Jake DeBrusque still listed as a depth forward, but we know he is better than what he is actually listed as. So Gurionov, Teratukin, and DeBrusque, the fourth line. Matthew Strom will make the team again, despite his role only being a minor league scoring forward. Cole Castles is still the center, and Noah Gregor has made the team. And really, I think, actually, now that I think about it, we could go with something like this, where, actually, I'm pretty sure these two guys, yeah, they're pretty much interchangeable. We could go with, like, the beat the shit out of you. Actually, since the Brusque, we could go with something like this. Gurionov, Castle, Strom, who all have a pretty good physical category. Strom, I mean, the, the aggressiveness kind of lets him down, but he is a power forward. Gregor, Teratuk, and Debrusque. Let me know. A ton of different combinations we could do with these lines, but this is the team defensively. Dennis Chalowski will be with Dougie Hamilton. Chalowski, unbelievable. What a beast. Roman Yossi. Now, again, we could have Yossi on the top pairing. Only a top four guy, but he is here now for a considerable amount of time. He will be paired starting off with Matt Grizzlick, who is a top four defenseman and an absolute beast, as we know. Hell, if we wanted to, we could put frickin' Grizzlick on the top line. It wouldn't necessarily matter. And then defensively, I was going to trade him. I was going to keep him. Then I was going to trade him. Sylvain Belafeu, I will look up again how to properly fucking pronounce it. I looked it up and I can't remember. God damn it. We're going to give him a chance. We're going to give him a chance. He will be paired with Carlo, who... Might honestly be on his way out at some point because he just hasn't gotten better in this series at all. Uh, you'll see the situation down in the AHL defensively. But of course, you know, we had Krug. We got rid of Hayek, Hedberg, and Lozon. 
but I still feel like our defense is in a good spot. You know, we could have argued to keep Krug there, and then our defense would really be incredible if that was Tory Krug right there on that third line spot. And we could have done that, and we could have afforded to do that, and maybe that's what we should have done, in all honesty. Too late now. But the reason I didn't is I want to give him a chance, and then there is someone who you'll notice is not here that could step in. We could trade Sylvan away if he doesn't work out and this other player could step in. The goaltending, Tuka Rask, down to an 88. Now, trades will obviously have a big you know, a big part of that. Krejci, Bergeron, and Krug. We'll see if he rebounds. I'm not going to panic and go out and get a good goalie. We're going to have faith in the goalies we have in this system right now. Stuart Skinner is normally an 82. He is feeling the effects of some of the trades. But he is going to be the backup this year. And then switching to the AHL, we'll go to goaltending first. Uh, Herme is right there. He and Skinner are neck and neck. And then Evan Sawchuk, the unsigned goalie at the start of the offseason, is here as well. And then, of course, you have Shane Finger, who needs to probably be playing, if not be the starter at some point. But he is signed. So that is really the question is what do we do? Like, we need to see how Skinner, Herme, and Sawchuk progress, and then Fingers there. Next year, at the latest, he'll be the starter down in Providence. We still, of course, want them to be competitive. The goalie situation is looking great, so we don't need to panic and go out and get a backup or a replacement for Tuka Rask. I want to go to defense next because Charlie McAvoy, of course, is the guy that we were talking about. Not the best defensive category, but we know what he can do. And worst comes to worst, if Sylvan doesn't perform... We can call up McAvoy, who's just, he's stuck. He's not progressing. So that's the question. And I think that's what I'd rather do is try out Sylvan. If he doesn't work, we have McAvoy. And then that way, we still get a decent return for Tory Krug. But there is no denying that holding on to him would have had the team be in a better spot. Chris McIntyre, our first-round pick from 2018, is making good progress. Then we have Riley Stillman, a fourth-round pick. He's looking good. Joel Lampkin is here. He has arrived. He is on the second pairing. Gordon Picard signed outright. He is on the team with Ralph Jarrett. Defensive scratches, we have two. Uh, Puninoffs was a signing, uh, a computer automated signing. Talbot and Allison are the backups. And then the forwards. Then the forwards, Riley Tufty is with Trent Frederick and Dmitry Sokolov. Kuznetsov is with McKenzie and Shemelevsky. Shogren is with Anderson Dolan and Barron. Asplund is with Breland. And Entwistle. I like the shape both teams are in. I could, you know, could the top six be a little bit better? Maybe. I mean, could the bottom six be better? Sure. Defensively, would it look better with Krug? Sure. But I still like the shape that this team is in. And I am looking forward to seeing what they can do as we move forward into the new year. Of course, I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. I look forward to your feedback on this episode and what you think we should do but do i think we are in a position to contend of course i do and and think of it this way we won the cup we lost in the playoffs we won the cup we lost in the playoffs it's year five it's an odd number we are the favorites we are the set we're the end of uh, the reverse san francisco giants of the nhl it's our year we're gonna win another cup and if we do then who knows what the hell happens from there that is it for this one, though, guys. You know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.